Jason, the culture cast is so cool. Tonight's episode is gonna rule. Mario, Luigi, and the Donkey Kong too. A million Koopa Troopas, all for me and you. Power bomb nation, nation, nation. Power bomb nation, nation, nation. Culture cast. Power no. bomb nation, nation, nation. Power bomb nation, nation, nation. Culture cast. Yeah, that's what I'm screaming about, baby. I know what that's all about. Yo, you watching us know somebody, what that's all about. Jason might not know what that's all about yet. I don't know. Somebody called Billy Ocean. I need to get you on the next album. Uh, I need to hear you do like a Caribbean queen. <laughs> like, Caribbean queen. You know. <laughs> no, I'm sure I, need, I, need you, I, need, I need to hear you doing this. Oh, shit. Caribbean so, queen, uh. You know? How's it going, yet. man? How was your Let's, week? I'm, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. It's a beautiful you day seem, outside. There's no crazy weather. No. You seem in very high spirits. I mean, you came out came out singing and swinging. I don't know. Buddy, the, the only bad part is nobody's seen it yet because nobody's joining us live just yet, but everyone will be here. They will. You got to give them time. You got to give them time. You know how it goes. I we'll have, will, uh, we'll have cut crazy that screen names popping in to comment on things that I'm like, who is that? Who is that again? <laughs> so, um, uh, what, what have you been doing all week, man? Anything exciting? Uh, just working. Where my my job has been crazy, and then just drawing and getting ready for events, and just that's about it. It's it's just the same old song and dance every every week, man. With me, it's 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 work hard in the day and then come home and then try to relax. But I end up working hard on my other craft, and it's yeah. So yeah, that's about it. Um, well, I know that feeling. It's a bunch yeah. of work and a bunch more work. Uh, Whoever just joined us, comment in the the uh, show tonight. Let us know if you missed the opening. You missed the opening. It was so good. I'm so proud. You missed. Of you. you missed the Grammy nominated. Graham Cracker nominated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some, so, something uh, like that. Looks like you got the Miller Light tonight. Is that what I you got said? The Miller Light tonight, man. Yeah, just a little little something something. I got a little a little water in my my Mando. My oh, nice. new favorite water yeah. bottle. Yeah. Little little Mandalorian. Man, yeah. fantastic. I can't believe you ain't watching that. I, you know when I have Disney Plus and I still haven't even... Dude. I forget that I, I forget that I have it. Dude. Because here's the deal. I, I got it for Willow, right? And so yeah. I watched Willow and uh, it was... Uh, it was fine. Whatever. I I had a lot of beef with it, but for the most part, I enjoyed it and it was like, okay, like... Let's see where this goes. And then they end up canceling it mm. for shame. I know, right? I know. I haven't watched Mando. Um, no, and I also heard Obi-Wan was really good. And there's all these all these Star Wars things I need to watch. But I I, I think I'd mentioned before, like my, I think my desire for Star Wars kind of has, has uh, fused out over the years. And, and I guess easily can be done, right? But I mean... But I heard these shows are really picking the spirit the back up. So, yeah, I mean, so, um, yeah, no, I, I forget that I had, I'm, I'm, and I'm like, every month, I'm like, $12 is coming out of my account. What the fuck? And I'm like, oh, it's Disney. That's right. I have Disney Plus. What is that? So I need to probably utilize it more. But you there's a lot of stuff on there it. that, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff on there that I would enjoy. I know there is. So I've, I've seen it. But uh, tonight's episode is nothing to do with Disney Plus, nothing to do with Star Wars. It's everything to do about everyone's favorite mustachioed plumber, Super Mario, yeah, and right. Luigi, and Donkey Kong, and Bowser, and Peach, and Toad, all the Nintendo yeah. classics. Yeah. Easily be done. Hmm. What? What? I think he is saying the force is not strong with Jason, folks. <laughs> honestly I'm, I'm not gonna lie it's not it's not it's not it's not very strong with me right now i don't uh i tried you know what i did try to watch the uh we did try to watch the um uh what was it was it andor yeah 
dude, I, I just couldn't. Dude, oh, you, couldn't you can't get into it. Andor because you haven't seen the other stuff. Have you seen okay. Rogue One? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. I, mean, I know that that's correlated with it, but we still, we all still love you, Jason. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. I love it's you okay. all too. Thank You're you. still in the fold. You're still in the fold. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. No, uh, I know. I, so we, we had an assignment to do before this week's episode, and that was see the Mario movie. Mm. And I failed. I failed yeah. the assignment. Jason didn't do that. So he's batting a thousand folks. Uh, no, he's going to go see the movie, but we would, we will do a whole episode and review view this movie because, number one, I want to see it one more time before I get really in-depth about it. That opening was a tribute to the movie. You will find out when you see it, and you will die. Cause yeah, I probably will it. now because I'll just I'll just see you singing. Oh yeah, which would be great because you will like me singing over, over the other. Oh wow, that's a stretch. Uh, that's a stretch. It is a, <laughs> it's a really <laughs> we'll big see, stretch. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but we are going to talk about Super Mario. We're going to talk about how it began, where it began, when it began, what it's been through. And its influence on pop culture, because after watching the movie and seeing the reception that it got. It's getting huge, huge reception. Yeah, it's the highest grossing animated film opening weekend ever by a big margin. Yeah. We're guaranteed two sequels. We'll get at least two sequels just based off how well this one did. And it dawned on me that everybody alive knows who mario is everybody knows who mario is it he doesn't is matter mario. what your age is it doesn't right? matter who you are it doesn't matter where you are mario for decades now has been a pop culture icon in every every sense of the word you know everybody right. sees mario and they're like oh it's, it's mario like they know who it is it's a me a mario yeah then they, they know who he is so and I like that. I like that uh, the entity of Mario has lasted this long, you know, because it, uh, it's just one of those things. It's just a silly thing that this company creates, and it's had such a lasting impact on, on Dude, everybody. you know who my babysitter was in the 80s? Who? Mario. Was Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, because back then, your parents could leave you at the house at six years old, and it didn't matter. There were there was nobody going to say anything, and right. that's what they would do. They would leave me at home with my Nintendo. I yeah. was probably no, I was probably fairly close to eight. I would be left alone with my Nintendo for however long they went to town because it was a thirty minute drive. Yeah, and I would play Mario Brothers. Yeah, nonstop. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's one of those things, man. It's just um. It's a household name. I mean, really. So, so let's uh, <clears throat> let's run down a little a little Mario history, shall we? Shall. All right. So, Super Mario is a video game character and the main protagonist of the Super Mario franchise, and has become one of the most successful and recognizable video game series of all time. Mario first appeared in the 1981 arcade game, Donkey Kong Flex the Shirt, where he was known as Jumpman and was tasked with rescuing his girlfriend Pauline from the clutches of the giant ape Donkey Kong. The game was a huge success and it helped establish Nintendo as a major player in the video game industry. I also know off a uh, documentary I listened to, uh, it talked about how the Donkey Kong game, when it was introduced into arcades, actually revolutionized from what arcades were, what the popular games were, all these space shooters. And Ooh. it kind of ushered in, hey, there's other things that are shoot down UFOs, like, you know, climbing There were so many of those. Too. I mean, like the, the, the shooter, the, the, you know, centipedes and, and asteroids and the space invaders. And so Galaga. Many, and Galagas. I mean, there's so many of them. Yeah, right. Games, it's kind of like a, yeah, great, but it, kind of a breath of fresh air, man. The whole, the whole platformer uh, layout was, it was, it was a welcome, uh, it was a welcome change, I think. So, 
very much so. I know these cabinets like sat and they were in another cabinet and the dude had to like repaint them all mm-hmm. to ship them out uh, mm-hmm. with the Donkey Kong game in it. Yeah. But in 1983, Mario returned to the arcade in the game Mario Brothers. They're not super yet. They're just the Mario Brothers. Not super yet, no. And this introduced his brother Luigi as a playable character. This is also the first time, the first appearance of many Mario's classic enemies, such as the Koopa Troopas, came into, came into play. Which, if you've ever played this game, it's a great, you know, kind of a battle back and forth game. You know, it's a lot of fun to, to sit down and hash out with one of your friends and hit the right. pal blocks and screw each other up. You ever played this one a lot? I have, yeah. Well, not a lot, but I had the, um, I've got the uh, Super Mario All Stars on uh, Super Nintendo, and of course it's on there. So, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. It's not. Uh, it's not what it ended up becoming, of course. But uh, you know. So now, however, it wasn't until 1985 that Mario truly became a household name with the release of Super Mario Brothers for the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System. This game is widely regarded as one of the greatest video games of all times, and it helped to establish many gameplay conversions that are still used in platforming games today, such as power-ups, secret areas, and boss battles. Since then, Mario has appeared in countless games across a variety of platforms, including the Game Boy, the Nintendo 64, the GameCube, the Wii, the 3DS, the Switch, the Game Boy Advanced, and uh, as well as numerous spinoffs and crossovers, Mario has also become an icon of pop culture, appearing in movies, TV shows, having his own theme park, being played by Captain Lou Albano, being played by Bob Haskins. Man. It's just amazing how many people watched, lived, played, enjoyed all kinds of Mario merchandise. Yeah. It's 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 crazy to think of how massive it became. It really is. Like uh and of course the uh oh gosh, I'm gonna butcher his name. President of Nintendo, Miyamoto last name is 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 fuzzy for me. Come on, late on me. I should know this. Oh god, I have no idea. Miyamoto, Miyamoto something like that. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> he named Mario after uh their who he was a, was he a was he a maintenance man in the building or was he a, a janitor or somebody? A custodial engineer. Custodial engineer. Okay, so yeah, I was kind of right on both both fronts there. But he, um, what what was it that he did he did for them that inspired them to did name the them? plumbing? <laughs> well, no, I think <laughs> like you know what? No, I think he did a. I think there was something he like a favor he did for them that that he let them in the building for free or. He did, and that's he was kind of like their their. Um, he let them use a building with no rent, yes. And they said that they would entitle their hero of the game after him. And I guess so. He's that, kind of a landlord type, yeah. And that's yeah. where Mario got Mario got his uh, looks is because his looks and his homage. name. I mean, they they named it and modeled it after after him. In yeah. Sort of a, uh, they didn't have no money. They were sure. yeah. For all intents and purposes, they were Bill Gates out in his garage with his buddies making Microsoft or right. whatever. Yeah. Um, and uh, course, I think that guy's name was Mario. It was. It, yeah. it, they totally, they absolutely named it after him and um, also modeled his, his look after him. So pretty cool. Pretty, pretty fun little tidbit. But uh, there's a really good audio book called Super Mario. And it details the the entirety of, of Mario. It was one of the most fascinating books I've listened to lately. Really? So let's let's talk about several people who have portrayed Mario. Obviously, Charles Martinet. Charles Martinet is the most famous actor to have played him, but he does all the all the classic Mario phrases in 
all the games, you know, it's a me, I let's it go. Oh, hoo -hoo. <clears throat> all of that is him. Um, he's been doing that since 1995. We mentioned one of mine and Jason's favorite movies. Bob Haskins played Mario in 1993, the, the dystopian Mario film. Love it. I don't care. I love it. Uh, no, I, I don't want any Mario. comments. I don't want any feedback. I love it. Like it's just, yeah. it's a fun movie. So I like it too. I like to see it gets its recognition now. It's like Ghostbusters too. You know, it took a while, um, but yeah. people get into it after. You know, it's like your parents, like, oh, that's a horrible movie, and kids are like, oh no, it's great. Yeah, it's, but is it? Yeah, it's like, awesome. we, yeah. Did we enjoy it? Okay, that's all that matters. So, <laughs> and I did. I enjoyed it. It's fun. It's a fun ride. So, my favorite Mario. Lou Albano. I already Lou know. Albano. Of course. Come on, mine too. Bob and look, Bob Hoskins is. I love him. The, the the guy can do no wrong in my book. But I I see Bob Hoskins and I still think Roger Rabbit. Roger Rabbit, of course. Same. I mean, that's but you know, Lou Albano, man, killed it. But I see Lou Albano, and I'm like, he killed it. Swing my hips from side to side. Come on, let's go, let's go do the Mario. Man. Yeah, yeah, I agree. He was so good. He was so good in the right. And the whoever the guy played Luigi, he was he was he was he, he was, was a good chemistry with too. the guy, man. He yeah, he said a lot of stuff. I I, I remember looking him up a while back, and honestly, Maniac can't Mansion what he is did. the one thing I know he was in. And really, yeah, he was like the main guy in Maniac Mansion, which no I think they actually man. made a video game of the TV show, or the I think it was a TV show. Okay. But here's an interesting fact about Lou Albano. And I didn't find this out from any Mario research. Lou Albano had full on full on beard and you know rubber bands in it when he was a he was a professional wrestler and wrestling manager. It was his look. It was his icon. Yeah. <clears throat> he got the opportunity to portray Mario. He shaved it all off without even getting the part yet. But yeah. he was he was so enthusiastic about being Mario, all gone, and he was there for it. And he was there for it, man. That's the thing. He he came through. He came in hot, man. You know, he gave up his gimmick, his trademark. If you if you know professional wrestling, that was your look. That was his money. If right. he didn't get Mario or if it failed. Oh, Lou Albano, we'll see in a year when you can grow your beard back out. Right, right. Walker Boone voiced Mario in The Adventures of Super Mario Brothers 3 and the Super Mario World Animated Series. Toru for Ouya, I'm sure I butchered that, provided the voice of Mario in the Japanese version of the Super Mario Brothers, an animated film released in 1986. I've not seen that, but I know it's on my cinema app on my on my Fire Stick. Okay. I might have to check it out. <sighs> Sorry, I'm so yawny over here. Man, Been I yawning. can't believe it. Here, here, I came with the energy, and I've I have had a ballad and a rap already, and there's still another rap to go. So tired today. Oh yeah. man. No, I'm with it though. Let's roll. Kenny James, he provided the voice of Bowser in various games since 2007. And then it mentions Captain Lou again because he was the live action part in the music video, Do the Mario, and which was also oh, they, part... There was a Mario music video to that? Huh? There was a music video to that? There was a music video oh, to that. Okay. There was a music video to my intro for tonight's show. Really? That you could probably find out there on YouTube and it wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt anything to watch. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Let me ask you a question. Do you ever have any Mario toys? You know, I had um, really the, the, and I and I do st still have them. Actually, um, looking right at them, the um, oh, you have the McDonald's ones. Well, you? the McDon yeah, the the Mario three McDonald's Happy Meal toys. I have them. Um, I have a. Uh, a plush, like a very small, it fits in your hand, uh, plush Mario with like a plastic head. 
No, no, I don't know where that came from. I don't even remember where I got that. I just, I ended up with it and I, I have it. Um, and also, uh, a few times in the past several years, they've done more um, like Mario Happy Meals. And they had some really cool toys with it. Like, uh, so I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll buy them just to get the, you know, the fucking toys. And, um, uh, and I've got them over there with the other ones. But I've got Luigi. You remember the the Mario 3 Happy Meal from 89 or whatever? I've got Luigi on the cloud over there. And I've got uh, the Mario on the you, suction cup on the bottom. You push him down on the spring. And then the spring pops up and he, he bounces. And uh, I've got all that over there. So, but yeah. Well, I guess I guess it's, yeah. Um, other than that, no. I don't really have any, um, any Mario toys. I had one... I had the I had the McDonald's toys from yeah, the Mario. Those, those are classic. Those are heat, man. That was like prime McDonald's. They were really good. The, yeah. the Koopa Troopa was one of my favorites. Yeah, oh yeah, but the yeah. Um, but I we had went to the Kentucky State Fair and I'd went with John A. And we go and we get to a point where we win a couple of stuffed animal things. He picked out a Seattle Seahawks stuffed mascot okay i picked out a luigi stuffed luigi and dude it was the coolest thing ever i love luigi's my favorite that was the only game i would ever play two player second player yeah yeah, luigi's cool he's cool and my brothers and sisters always liked it because they would be like well it's the only game we get to play but they hate it because they would die really early and then i would take it and then i would play and they would get bored before their turn again yeah yeah. Um, I have a Mario energy drink somewhere in my collection. My 3DS pouch is a Mario 3DS pouch. The one I got for my Nintendo Switch looks like Mario's overalls, and it's a big case, and it's oh, red nice. with the blue overalls, and it's got yeah. like the little buttons when you close it. Yeah. Um, shirts, hats. I, w- I would collect anything Mario. I love Mario. Yeah, Mario Mario's is cool, man. He's a... Uh... I don't know. He's one of those. Th- he's one of those things that's like been a part of your life for so long that like, what what would you do without him? You know what I mean? Like, what would you? What would the video game Nintendo. industry be without him? What would uh, I don't know? Just this. We owe a lot to that guy. That little plumber. McDonald's toys to mean something. They used to be real country, a proper country. <laughs> Back in the day when the McDonald's toys were good and the USA was standing strong with a great yeah. dollar. Yeah. That's exactly um, right. That's exactly right. <laughs> now they don't make them like they used to, man. They just don't. They don't. So let's let's run down the list of just really Mario games. And look how many there's so many. So, so many. there's a lot. Yeah. I mean, how are we gonna cover Generations, I mean, like the gonna, Micro yeah. Machine Man. You remember those commercials? Back no, then? Micro Machines. <laughs> Let's call out all the Mario games. We got Donkey Kong, Mario Brothers, yeah. Super Mario One, Two. No, we got Donkey Kong. Started it all. The original Mario Brothers. How many times? How many times do you think you've completed all eight levels in Mario One? I gotta be honest with you, not a lot because mostly it's about just hitting the warps. Now I did. I'm not gonna lie. I did a um, several years ago when I was. I mean, obviously, I still play my old Nintendo and, and all these old games. Several years uh, years back, I was heavy, heavy into it, and uh, I was like, I wonder how fast I can run through Mario One. Like, I, I never play Mario One because it's just one of those things. It's like. Ah, there are 20,000 other better games than that, but it's a classic. So how fast can I run through it? And um, I would practice it and practice it and practice it. And I would just run through as quick as I could. And I got to where using the warps um, and I had footage of this on YouTube and I've deleted it since, but um, I had, um, I had ran through it in like, 14, 13 minutes or something. 
using the wards. But the thing is, is the world record is like a few minutes under that. So I was like, damn, like I was kind of close, but like not. Yeah. I mean, I could probably speed never runs on that game are freaking ridiculous. Yeah. And I, I couldn't, I could never, I could never beat it. I'm sure. But uh, like beat the speed run record. But I mean, like it was fun to see how quick I could run through that first one and just how much I remembered um, just, just from being a kid and, um, yeah, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't think I've ever made it. I, I've certainly played it level by level, but I don't think I ever beat it going level by level. If you know what I mean? Like I've, I've only beaten it using like your warp zones. So yeah. The first time I beat it was with the warp zones, but Mario was the game because of number one, it was the only game I had for a while. So it got a whole lot of play and I will pick up Mario right now. If I pick up my 3DS, the first game I will always go to play is Mario one. I'll do that on my switch. I'll turn it on. I'm like, okay, let me get two levels of Mario in real quick. I got to get level one and level one, two in and out real quick. Um, I've beaten it multiple times in a row. And that's going through each level. And the enemies get faster. You get the Beetle Baileys coming in at the first thing and replacing the Goombas. Yep. So it gets incremental harder. Um, but it is one of the things. I prefer to play it and go through every level than using the Warp Zone on Mario on Mario uh, 1. Okay. The world record is now 4 minutes and 54. Under 5 minutes is ridiculous. What? That That's is crazy. Cr- like I couldn't even imagine. No, there's no way I could do it. I, there's no way I could do that. No. That's, That's got to be using the warp zones. Because yeah, I don't think absolutely. I could beat Koopa's Castle, level 8 castle. I couldn't beat that in under 5 minutes. That's crazy. Because you got kind of the maze thing going on. Yeah. I don't know that I could beat it now. I have to I, mean, I could beat it, but not that quick. I mean, there's no there's just no way. Like uh, That's impressive. I mean, yeah. You got to practice, practice, practice. Five that. Minutes, I mean, that's, yeah. Super Mario Brothers 2. Uh, the infamous yes. Super Mario 2 because um, I don't know if we've ever discussed this uh, here. I, I don't think we've ever had an opportunity to or any reason to. But uh, well, We definitely got the reason and opportunity right now. Tonight is the night. Uh, so it's, uh, Super Mario Brothers 2 was a, a completely different type of game when it when it was released over here in North America, of course. Uh, what was it, 86? 87? 85. 85. Mario 2? Oh, no, 88, sorry. Mario yeah. Brothers 1 was 85. Damn, 88, really? So, okay, so this was that long. Uh, of course, it was a... Um, we, we we saw it and said, "Who are these? Who are these enemies? What is this whole different layout and gameplay? Like, what is this?" And uh, as a kid, I thought, you know, we thought nothing of it. We just thought of it as a new Mario game, and we just played it and accepted it for what it was. But uh, what had happened was there was a game in uh, Japan called Doki Doki Panic. Doki Doki, pa- and, and I could be wrong about some of my facts here, but correct me if I'm if you catch me on anything, but. Uh, Doki Doki Panic was a game in uh, Japan, and the sequel to Doki Doki Panic was something they were working on, of course, Doki Doki Panic 2, and they decided originally that they were going to do, uh, in North America, a follow-up to Super Mario Brothers that was exactly like the first one, only it was so much more difficult, and Japan was so far ahead of us that they were like, I don't think these Americans can handle the difficulty that we're about to throw at him. So <laughs> why don't we take, why don't we take Doki Doki Panic 2 from over here, replace the characters, the playable characters with the Mario characters, which now you were able to be Mario, um, uh, Luigi, Peach, and uh, Toad. And we'll insert them into this game called Doki Doki Panic and just release it over North America and call it Mario 2. And, that's why we had all these weird enemies and all these crazy things that we didn't expect or, you know, expect to see in a Mario game. It was, it was like a whole new thing. It was kind of a whole new adventure, but we didn't, we didn't know that back then. We just thought of it as, Hey, a whole new adventure. Right. So pop it in, play it. It's a classic. I mean, it is, it's most certainly a classic, but. Um, I love Mario too. 
I love Mario too. I, I always de- love Mario. Too. I debate uh, a lot on if you were to ask me what's your favorite Mario game. It's 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 always a toss up between two and three. I I can never really, I don't think, nail it down to a uh, definitive uh, answer for that. But uh, I like playing Mario three because Wendy, my wife, will play Mario three with me. Yeah. I like Mario 2 for the solo gameplay because yeah. it's got some of my favorite villains. I love Bowser. I love Bowser. But oh, but dude, there's so much fun in, in Mario 2. I mean, you've got the you've got Fry Guy. Yeah, the, oh, yes, with, the bosses the, were good. Yeah, the uh, flame with the sunglasses. You got Mouser, the, the mouse. Um, uh, you of had course, the Hydra. The, the Hydra, the, yeah, the, the snakes. Head. Yeah. Uh, uh, Wart himself was cool interesting mechanics on all of them i loved using the world as part of the you know throwing the blocks to defeat berto oh yeah berto yeah 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 she was cool it's a great game man and a lot of those characters stuck throughout shy guys shy guys guys were from that game yeah and those guys some of those characters have stuck through mario um the, the, the franchise ever since then. some of them haven't been seen again and some of them have have stuck so the um, it's, um the cactuses the tall oh, cactuses yeah. Yeah. they've been in every game since yep yep too. um mario the other game you mentioned oh luigi luigi in that game the the cool thing about mario 2 was each character was different it wasn't like you were just playing someone with a different skin it gave you because Mario was easy to control and Toad was easy to control. But they didn't jump very high, right? So you right. had Luigi and Princess, each with their own little uh, jumping abilities. But the, I Princess always... would stay in the air forever. Yeah. Listen, I anytime I play it, there's there's from front to back, I will always be Princess Peach. Like, uh, she's... The... I'm just going to be Peach. Like, I will do Luigi because I feel there is an air of difficulty by playing the game with Luigi, especially the ice level. He's frozen. Uh, Oh, there you are. I think. Okay. See, I thought you were frozen. No, 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 no. I'm still, I'm Mm. still in motion. All right. You were in carbonite over there, man. So, um, (laughs) Luigi had the air of difficulty about it, and Luigi became my favorite to use on the ice level in particular because it was, it gave it the most difficulty. So it was more impressive when you could do that with Luigi, but also he jumped really high, and I liked how his yeah. legs went. His little, his little feet. Yeah. Mario Brother 3 introduced us to power ups. We got really cool power ups. We got unique power ups in forms of leaves that turned you into a raccoon. Yeah. We got the Tanuki suit. Still have no idea what a Tanuki is. Uh, but it, it you could you could you could you could turn to stone in it, right? So, oh yeah, oh yeah, you could. You like if you really press down and B, you could turn into like a stone statue and nobody could hurt you. Yeah, Pretty you had cool. like the little uh the little uh, Himalayan monk guy that lives up on the mountain with a staff mm-hmm. is what it kind of looked like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Frog suit. Frog suit. You could get the Hammer Brothers suit. You could throw hammers. Oh, yeah. That was so badass. Yeah. The Hammer Brothers were cool in the first game. They were cool. They were, they were always they were cool. Hard. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um. Super Mario World. Super Mario World on the Super Nintendo. Well, I'll tell you what, let's let me let me just run it back to, to Mario 3 real quick. It was there was there was such a um this was at the height of of, of Mario's pop culture um presence, I think. And, and it was just like the anticipation of is there going to be another Mario three? I'm hearing rumors or, you know, maybe there is, I don't know. Now for people who saw the movie, the wizard, 
1989. This is before Mario 3 came out. This is before anybody knew anything about Mario 3. The final game that they play at Video Armageddon in California in the movie The Wizard is Mario 3. And everybody, the whole the whole shtick of it was, how's he going to win this? He doesn't know. Any, we don't know anything about Mario 3. What is Mario 3? And so we're all watching this movie and like, what the hell is Mario 3? <laughs> and it turns out, it's, it's just, I mean, the movie is like a 90-minute Nintendo commercial anyway. So that was our first peek at Mario 3. That was our first glimpse at and we were like, is this, is this real? Is this a real thing? And uh, of course, sure enough, the next year. Um, or was it was it that same year? I think was it was it, that it, same uh, year. Yeah, it was released and uh, phenomenal. I mean, it's a great game. But uh, 1990 was when Mario 3 was released. Okay, so it was a year, probably less, a little less than a year after The Wizard was released. So, yeah. Yeah. And so we were all hoping, like, is, I hope this is real, right? So then we got it. We got Mario 3. And uh, I've told you my story before where I won the pumpkin painting contest at Lowe's, and I had my choice of Nintendo games, and they walked me to the case. Challenge. Yeah, and Mario 3 was there, and that's the one I should have grabbed, but instead I, I took uh, WrestleMania Steel Cage Challenge. And I, I still don't know why to this day, but uh, I did. And, Steel Cage Challenge was a good game. It was fun. It was fine. Like whatever. I. It wasn't long after that that I ended up with Mario Three anyway. So, <laughs> but it's fine. I'm I'm happy with my choice. So, yeah. Love Super we, Mario Three. Yeah, but we're talking Super Mario World now. We moved on, and uh, we did. No the biggest there. The ad of Yoshi. We get a cape. I think that we get capes in that game. We got a cape. We got to We get the feather. You got the cape. So. Yep. Yep. Uh, better graphics. Oh yeah, music was phenomenal. Oh yeah, top notch, top really notch nice. music, man. Yeah. But we started a trend. Mario three set the precedent for what every Mario game was going to play like moving forward, because you had the overall map, and then you moved from stations on yep. each map, whereas yep. one and two were a little more free flowing for the whole time, mm -hmm. and it gave us and it gave us save points. You could save a Mario game now which you have never been able to do before mario 3 and right. that was awesome because back in the day we didn't have we didn't have save cards in the system we didn't have clouds to back everything up we didn't have any of that you lost on mario well now i understand all these years later but there was a way to pick up where you left off if you ran out of continues on mario um However, we didn't know that when we were little. We died. We, we started over again. It was a hard, hard life. We it made us better people in the snow. Yeah, to school with one. We're shoe. better for it now. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It made us stronger. What doesn't kill yeah. you makes you stronger. Yeah. Nineteen ninety-two, a game that really revolutionized the Mario franchise and Nintendo altogether, was Super Mario Kart. It was. it was. It was a big one. Super Mario Kart was fantastic. Um, Mario All-Stars, which you mentioned earlier for the Super Nintendo. Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island. That's, you know what, I own that and it's such a great game. Have you played that? I don't think so. Dude, it's probably my favorite Mario game. Really? I will I will have to check that out. The graphics, the play, the music, everything is just top tier. I, I mean it is it is just so good and it looks so different than any other Mario game at that point. And uh yeah, it is it is it's it's top notch, man. I will have to check that out. I want to stream some Mario games. I think that mm. is one of the goals for the summer is I want to do some Mario uh, streaming. Yeah. Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. That's a fantastic game. I got that game. I gave up on it years ago. Though. I'm stuck at a spot and I just I don't even remember where it is. I just kind of I kind of gave up on it. I I thought about picking that back up uh, recently, but uh, I've got that. I need to 
I had it on an emulator on my phone, but I couldn't just play. I can't play a lot of stuff on my phone. Mm. Um, I might have to pick it up. I think I have it on the Switch with my the nin- old school Nintendo app on there. Yeah. Um, I'll have to check that out and see if I do. Yeah, it's fun. It's just, uh, I don't know. I love the RPGs. You know, it was like you're, you're, we're melding two of my favorite game types, Mario and Final Fantasy. With right. Me. Then we moved to the Nintendo 64. Now, this is when I got back into Nintendo. I went with Sega in the Super Nintendo years. So here's where I got back in with Mario, and it was Mario 64. This really revolutionized Mario. It did. This is where we're we're introduced to a a a a, a, a persona and a voice that would stick for for years and and still with us today. But uh, I personally, I, I gotta be honest with you, I don't like the game that much. Oh, really? I have it, and I tried to play it. And maybe it's because I'm not that good at it, so that's why I don't like it. But uh, I can't remember where I got stuck. And I feel like it was maybe later on in the... Um, there's some fire levels where you're hopping from platform to platform in this floating lava or something like that. you know. And I just couldn't, I don't, I don't know what it was. I couldn't find my way out of it. I just couldn't. And I, I just sort of gave up. And it has been years since I've touched it. But I know people who've like beaten it 100% and gotten every little thing that they need to find, every little whatever star they need to find. And I'm like, I, I don't know how you, how you did it. I I suck at this game. So <laughs> yeah, I didn't, uh, I've never, I've never beaten. I've seen people beat it, but I've never, I've never beaten it myself. So. Now, I've beaten it, but I've not come anywhere close to getting all the stars. Nah. I'm not good like that, but I have gone through. I've, I've grabbed Bowser by the tail. I've slung him around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Mario Kart 64. This the, is where Mario Kart got big. Well, in my opinion, the best version of it, too. Yes. The best, most fluidly playable version of mario kart that you can find i think um the last just... two years of my high school were spent with friday or saturday night going over to my buddy tim's house and playing mario kart we'd have like 12 a dozen of us over there we would play magic we would play mario and it was just a good time and mario kart is so fantastic and i still love it because i still kick everybody's ass in it and it's one of the few games that i can pop in against anybody and i'm like all right hold yeah. on to your butts because it's getting ready to get real here we get hot. luigi luigi in a classic cart i got this yeah yeah no that's a, it's that's it's, it's a great game I th- like i said i think that's the best version of the uh entire series of mario kart like i that is that's the joint right there so it gets so now we got Mario eight on the, the Mario Kart eight on and the gra- It's fantastic. And yeah. it's a ton of fun, but it's so customizable. Like you're choosing your wheels and your bike and it's, it's come a long, long, long yeah. way. You know, I didn't like the one on the, uh, on the Wii. I, I dated not a, a girl, big fan of the controls on that. The controls are terrible. And I dated a girl who had the steering wheel, um, attachments to the controller you know and i feel like that made things even harder <laughs> it's everything is so sensitive and so i don't know i just i couldn't play it i, I was terrible at it i was like look i know that i'm not like this bad at, at, at video games so something's going on here right so maybe i was just that bad at it but um it's the controls it was I it was not good it was not good game. yeah one good Mario Party, Paper Great Mario. Games, Paper man. Mario is a really good game. Do you play Mario played. Party? Yeah, I love the Mario Parties. Those, those are just a lot of fun. I've never. It's like a board. It's like a, a video board game. I, I, I love it. It's just, it's great. Um, never played the. Uh, never played the Paper Mario's. Paper Mario seemed to pick up where the RPG left off, 
and Paper Mario seem to proceed forward as their RPG-based game. Uh, yeah. They've got two or three of them, and everybody's told me the, that they're all fantastic, uh, that they're all really good. They have a really good story to them. Do you like Mario Golf? Uh, the only one I've ever played was the, uh, I guess it was called the NES Open on Nintendo. Uh-huh. The, like the original Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, I love that game. The, the one on Nintendo? Yeah, the NES. Yeah, no, it was great. It was fun. Um, but I haven't. I don't think I've played any of the uh, the other Mario uh, Golf's after that. Wasn't there a Mario Soccer? There is. There's a Mario Strikers. Strikers, that's yeah. That's out now. Uh, of course, Mario's done tennis, uh, the Olympics, uh, multiple versions of the Mario Golf. The newest Mario Golf's really good. I bought that, and that's a game that we'll sit down as a family, and we'll pass the controller back and forth, and we'll play, you know, eight or nine holes mm -hmm. of uh, Mario Golf, and it's a lot of fun. I, yeah. I enjoy the Mario Golf. While we're on the topic of sports, let's not forget, let's take it back a little bit, let's not forget that Mario was a referee for Mike Tyson's punch-out. That is true. That is very true. He was. And and he had a little bit of a voice then. Mm-mm. Uh, <laughs> mm -mm. mm -mm. mm -mm. mm -mm. mm -mm. mm -mm. Yeah. Super Mario Land, Super Mario Land 2, Fun games. Mario's Picross, Wario Land, which was Super Mario 3, and again, Mario Golf and Mario Tennis. Those were your Game Boy games. The six golden coins game was really good. The Mario it was fun. Land, yeah, Mario I got Land that. 2, I got that, yeah. Those were really good. Super Mario Advance in 2001. Mario and Luigi Super Superstar Saga. These were on the Game Boy Advance. I never had any of those. Yeah, me neither. Then we got to the GameCube. Now, I have not played a lot of the games moving forward at this point. Uh, Same. I'd had a GameCube till later, but that was Super Mario Sunshine. I own it now. It's one that I plan on playing and beating. Um. Another Paper Mario, a Tennis, another Mario Golf, Super Mario 64 DS, which allows you to play as Luigi, Yoshi, and two other characters. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Superstar Saga was my jam, which uh, I don't know which system that one was on. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Yo, so, um, hold that thought. I'm running to the bathroom real quick. All right. So Matt, which which system was Superstar Saga? And was that a Mario game? And Matt, you need to go back and listen to the opening of the show once everything is done. Because it was fantastic and you will greatly appreciate it. So we had uh, more Super Mario Karts, the Super Mario Brothers U, and the Super Mario Brothers 2, the new Super Mario Brothers. Let's see. So that was on the Game Boy Advance, and then they remade it on the 3DS. I will have to check that one out. I got a 3DS, and I could probably pick up 3DS games really, really cheap now. Uh, another Mario Kart 8, Super Mario 3D World, <clears throat> Mario 8 Deluxe, which I have now. That's fantastic. Um, the new Super Mario Brothers Deluxe, Super Mario Party, and then we got mobile games. We got a Super Mario Run. That's a lot of fun. Uh, my daughter likes to play that a bit. And then we got Mario Kart Tour. Mario Kart Tour, I have on my phone. Again, I think you run into the same thing you run into with the Wii as far as you're moving your controller uh, from side to side, and it's made on those access points in, the, um, in your phone. So I, may, I think it makes it a less fun version 
uh, to play when it's on the phone. I was talking about Super Mario Run on the phone and then Super Mario Kart Tour are two mobile games. Oh, I is. tell you the one I liked, though, was Dr. Mario. They had oh, Dr. Oh, Mario. Yeah, he, doc- he was a doctor, too, Mario. Yeah. Was. He's, he's done it all, man. Yeah, man. I mean, you're a great game. Great game, man. Uh, Matt said the Superstar Saga was on the Game Boy Advance, and then they remade it on the 3DS. And the remake has a side game as Bowser's Minions. Oh, sweet. Uh, sweet. Which Bowser got. Oh, and that's something we never mentioned on the earlier. We're getting in there. Uh, Mario 3 introduced the Koopalings. Which that's true. His time, sons, right? Yeah. They were. Or his, we, his, his, yeah. Sons well, we were daughters. told they're his kids. Yeah. But they're not. Now they're his, like, just his Koopalings, and he has one son. Which is Bowser Jr., who's quite adorable for a for a small Bowser. Okay, uh, but the Koopalings are no longer his, his children. Kids. Okay, yeah, yeah. They were... I liked it better when they were because I liked yeah. Ludwig and Iggy and Wendy. Yeah, yeah. they were Wendy. really cool. Yeah, and then you had that thing that and it would go around and it would pounce on the floor with its hands and then it spin around. You had to jump on it. It was oh like yeah. Your, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. Roberto for Mario 3. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, a lot of Mario Karts and Mario Golfs. Then we seem to get the annual one release of a, a particular title that happened every year. <laughs> Super Mario Galaxy is widely considered as one of the best Mario games. Really? Uh, I have that, waiting to play that as well. Uh, Super Mario Odyssey is supposed to be extremely good. That takes Mario into a more of a traditional open world game. Um, plus, I'm sure there's tons that I didn't, I couldn't find, or I there's forgot a lot. about. I mean, or... You've got like Luigi's Mansion. Yeah. If we're talking something correlated to Mario, um, and all the Wario, of course, Wario games. Right, Wario is, and Waluigi. Yeah. They uh, Wario was introduced, if I'm not mistaken, off the Game Boy. <coughs> I think that's where he came from, right? Uh, it was e- it was either that or the uh, the Nintendo itself. I, I, I think there was a, a Wario game. I think it was one of the last games Nintendo made for the original system was uh, Wario's Woods, maybe or, and I think if if I recall, it was maybe like a um, sort of like a Tetris. Yoshi's Cookie type game, you know. Okay. Well, I like Tetris. I didn't yeah. like Yoshi's Cookie. Yeah. No. Uh, no like it. Not so much fun. Yeah. So, so I think it was sort of similar to, to that. So let's see how many of these cameos that you are aware Mario made in other games. We talked about him making his appearance in Punch Out mm-hmm. as a referee. Wrecking Crew. Didn't Wrecking Crew wasn't that technically both of them? Is that the one that, or is that was the Ice Climbers? Am I thinking of it? No, no, Ice Climber wasn't him. No, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was Wrecking Crew. Yeah, he was, uh, he was like a demolitionist. He would go through and 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 uh, you would bust down walls and and things with your hammer and try to complete the level. Uh, kind of a hard game, but it was one I, I played a lot when I was a kid because my neighbor had it. And um, but that was, it was definitely Mario. So. Makes a lot of sense considering yeah. he, he his original gig was working on a construction site, saving his girlfriend from a big ape. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that in the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Mario made a cameo? I did not know that. He in this game, there's a painting of Mario on the wall in the Hyrule Castle. Really? <sighs> and now we played I've seen this one there were a string of games where you and mario and luigi at the same time um i've seen these i don't think i've ever played them but i think they were game boy games and i think they made it onto the the wii or the switch but it was probably one of those where you could play at an alternate time did you know that in the legend of zelda majora's mask mario also made a cameo a mario mask can be found in the game which transforms the player into Mario. <laughs> really? Minecraft. Did you know Mario appeared in Minecraft? Didn't know that. 
a Mario themed texture pack was released for this game and it includes textures, music, and character skins. I know this one. Ava's got it on her Minecraft. Did you know that Mario appeared in Just Dance 3? <laughs> no. Mario appears as a playable character in the game's Just Mario bonus level. Here's where they get really interesting, though. Did you know that in NBA Street version 3 on the GameCube, PlayStation 2, Xbox, Mario, Luigi, and Peach appear as playable characters in the basketball game? So they out there dunking on them. Oh, yeah. Peach is dunking from the three-point line. You already know she is. She, she's like Michael Jordan. Yeah, she's floating. SSX on tour. Okay. I'm, I'm assuming this is a, a motorbike game or something. Mario and Luigi appear as unlockable characters in the game. NBA 2K17. I don't know how true this one is. Mario and several other Nintendo characters appear as playable characters in the game's blacktop mode. Wow. But Mario, I think, had they, he has a baseball game. I know that. Oh, shit. Really? I've, I've seen the baseball game. The baseball game looks like a lot of fun. Hmm. We've talked about some of the shows Mario was in. The Super Mario Brothers Super Show from 89 to 91. The Adventures of Super Mario Brothers 3. Now, that's where we got the Mario... Well, between the two of them, you had the Mario rap that they also used in the movie as their commercial. So there was a little Easter egg there. You had the Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games in Tokyo. This was a game, but evidently it was also a short-run series, and I think over in Japan only. I, yeah, I hadn't heard of that the, at all. So, Wreck-It Ralph. Oh, true. And did he appear in one episode of Captain N and the Game Master? Was there one episode where they ran into Mario? Probably. Uh, there was an episode where they ran into Bayou Billy. Yes. So, yeah, I, I can only assume. There would have to be one, right? Right. Like, at least one. So. Clothing, collectibles, comic book, board games. You can get a Mario chess set, which all oh, those look really cool. I want yeah. one. Now, um, I, I, let me just tell you, I know something that you and I were both into. I remember specifically, when I, when I think about these things, I think about you. Because I know that you and I used to talk about them and, and, and be into them when we were kids. Was the, uh, the Nintendo... Um, scratch off trading cards oh yes you would buy them and, and they would be like lottery tickets for kids and, and you would just <laughs> so awesome. yeah that's what they Maybe were they were lottery and scratch offs they were lottery tickets for kids <laughs> they were they you know you would you would get a cool you would get a pack of trading cards and the cards would have a picture of a, a nintendo scene from a game that whether it be punch out or uh, mario or mario 2 or zelda or whatever and um and they would have these little silver balls, dots on the card, and you would scratch those off. You'd take a little coin and scratch them off, and uh, you get points. You would just get points, and it didn't mean anything. You weren't going to win anything. It didn't matter, but you just got them because they were cool. And they would come with uh, collectible stickers. Um, I still have a Punch-Out sticker. I think it's uh, I think it's Glass Joe. Um that's funny because when I when you mention the scratch offs and the cards, that's the first card that pops into my head every time, is Glass Joe. Glass Joe, yeah, I have uh, I have one, and uh, but oh, those are great, man. We uh, I used to, God, I mean, they were like twenty five cents a pack when we were kids, and I would love to know who the only win on Glass Joe's record is. I, I, I would still, too. I want to know. I would too. Matt says that something he heard the other day that Mario was the only character not to appear in Ooh. Captain N. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does not mean we didn't get a Super Mario Brothers episode, though. Yeah, I don't Toad. know. 
I mean, they, I, they I would mean, be hard pressed not to. Uh, yeah. Not to get one. You'd have to, right? I mean, like you would have to. You'd have to acknowledge Mario at some point in that shit. You all right? Where you at? What you doing? No, I got a visitor behind me. Oh. Uh, my dog Spock is in here oh. hanging out. Hey, Spock. And, and my wife walked in here and she's listening to the episode on her phone and then I could hear myself talking and it was really Tell her to get in the camera. Really say messing hi. with me for a minute. Tell her to pop in and say hi. Get on camera. <laughs> oh, did you hear Jason? He said pop in and say hi. <laughs> No, so, pop into the camera and say, Oh, hi. no, not right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, not right now. Yeah. Hello, uh, Wendy. yeah, she likes to play Mario Brothers 3. I think yeah, play Mario's 3 with us. We should play it. No, well, he can hang out in here. So, we got Spock joining us in the background here. But yeah, I remember the Super Mario Brother cards. They were cool. I remember being Luigi for one Halloween in Peaks Mill. Uh, one year I dressed up as Luigi. And I remember that I used to wear a hat that was very similar to this that, that uh, my second grandfather gave me. And it had a button on it. And mm -hmm. it popped up. So when you put it on, it popped up like the Mario Brothers hat. It just didn't have the initial on there. Sure. And I think on Halloween we put an L on a piece of paper and stuck it to it. Of course, because that was that's, that was yeah. one of my mom's creativity at that point. Yeah, that's what you did. That's what you had to do back then. Yeah, you just you just had to wing it, right? Yeah, overalls. Yeah, and a and a green shirt. Throw some Oshkosh gosh. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Um, I also remember drawing. And in particular, this is a memory that always comes back to you when I talk about Mario or even think about it. Or I sit down and draw Mario because you were the one that showed me how to do a lot of the the curves and stuff like on their hat to make it look right and across their nose and things like that. So Did I? I remember you little... saying this about uh, about Ninja Turtles. I, 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 yeah. that I showed you. I showed you how to draw a Ninja Turtle. It, that shows how much we paid attention in school, right? Yeah, right. I learned well, how to draw well, Ninja Turtles and yeah. Mario hats. Yeah. The Ninja Turtles have the same little texture thing on the side of their yeah. bandanas as the top of Mario's hat. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was drawing all that back then, man. So, we have finally gotten something that we have waited a long time time for and this is a mario movie that appears to be highly regarded it's fantastic i've seen it i was going to love it any way it goes but i was so worried that i was going to go in here and love this movie and then we'll never see anything else ever again but this mario movie is the largest grossing animation film ever it has beat every single Disney film's box office record. Yeah. It has set the highest grossing debut for an Illumination field, our film, beating the Minions films. This thing's fantastic. And it's littered with Easter eggs from front to back, from opening to ending. There are two post credit scenes that you have to stay for. I only stayed for one, and I was aware, unaware from the second. And there are a couple Easter eggs to the old movie. Really? That are in there. Wow. When are you going to go see this movie, Jason? I need to go see it because here's the deal. My girlfriend wants to see the Dungeons & Dragons movie. Oh, that looks really good, too. And, uh, you know, I've, I'm not into it. I don't know. I, I've never been into it. But... <laughs> But I've heard it was a good movie, so I would watch it absolutely. So I'm thinking, like, you know, we need to, we need to find a day where we can kind of double feature this and, and go see it. Um, and I want—I really want to go. See, I mean, I would go see Mario. I, I was my initial plan was to just wait until it came out on like streaming or something and watch it then. But yeah, I feel like now I need to like kind of experience it in the theater after it seeing everybody the go see it, after seeing everybody go and enjoy it for what it was in the. Uh, in the theater and kind of having that experience. I feel like, uh, 
I don't know. I feel like I should probably just pull the trigger and do it. So you really should. I will let you read our wonderful comment here. It's the happiest you walked out of theaters in years. Wow. Now, see, I felt I felt that way about uh, I felt that way about Ghostbusters Afterlife. I did too. That's what that's what got me. That's what. But got I'll tell me. you what. I walked out happier of the Mario movie than I did a Ghostbusters. Really? My daughter turned to me. Now, the the Mario and Ghostbusters are the two things that, that she has gotten into. Ooh. And I'm very thankful for both of those. But she walked out of there and spun around and she's like, oh my gosh, that was such a great movie. And she loved every second of it. Wendy enjoyed it. Laughed. There were, it was fantastic now she enjoyed both the ghostbusters film too but i well, was she's literally a ghostbusters. smiling from the mario movie because it was nostalgia and fan service because with ghostbusters we were just fucking crying is what yes. we were doing well that's yeah. what we were doing we were weeping tears okay, I, of I, I, like, may, I may have cried oh the mario there's Brothers no doubt about too. <laughs> i mean that's yeah i cried in mario brothers too so yeah. The devil, no, we. <laughs> this You're right. The last week's episode. Geraldo, right. Geraldo's gonna do, gonna he's gonna get up, he's gonna get our asses over, over that one. Yeah, Dungeons yeah. and Dragons was yeah. definitely would have definitely been a part of the Satanic Panic. Yeah. Um, you have to go see Mario. Yeah, I want. I'm gonna go see it. I want to see how many Easter eggs after you watch it. Well, I probably won't even do an episode. I probably, I, you know. We will do an episode just reviewing this movie and see how many little things we can catch, even if it's just a little short, short supplemental episode. Yeah. No, um, yeah. And in August, we have to go see the Ninja Turtles movie. We have to make that a plan. Well, I feel like we need to go see, uh, I feel like we need to go see Indiana Jones as well. Oh, yeah. No, that's, that's a definite two. When is that? It's like what? June 30th. Yeah. We have, yeah. We, well, so, okay, so we got June 30th is Indiana Jones, and then the week of my birthday, so I guess the next week is Ninja Turtles. So. Well, no, it's July. You got a whole month between. Oh, them. yeah, dude, I'm sorry. My, <laughs> That's my head calendar is way off here. July, yeah, my head August. calendar is way off. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but no, we should go do that. Uh, now, my girlfriend would, uh, she she likes Indiana Jones. Uh, don't think she would be interested in going seeing the Ninja Turtles movie, but she she does like Indiana Jones. So, um, man, you know, I, I'll need I'll need a date. I'll need a buddy. If you want to go, we can go make a. We we, go we make should make happen. the Ninja Turtles happen. Yeah, we can make Indiana Jones happen. And you know what else is coming out this year? Ooh. Ghostbusters. End of the year. There's three more. Are they going to do it this year? I thought it was. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, no, oh. it's supposed to be December this year. Three movies. Wow. Three big movies to get three to the and see. Yeah, I'm down with it. Yeah. Man. Matt likes the new Indiana Jones movie. I think it looked great. Honestly, I, let me let me just tell you this. Let me just tell you this. Uh, I do think it looks fantastic. And. Uh, you get uh, you if you follow things like I do on social media, you start. I mean, you just see ads and pop ups all the time for Indiana Jones shit. And uh, I like to read the comments and 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 I like to see what people have to say about it. And I, I've been getting a lot of uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull like promo things and promo posters and things lately and. Uh, I got to be honest with you. I am glad to see that people have uh, sort of taken defense to the movie and saying, you know what? It's really not as bad as people made it out to be. It's really not, you know, it, it, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was, one of, it, it was the weakest link to me personally uh, in the Indiana Jones series. But it was still an Indiana Jones movie. It was still a fun little ride. And it's funny that to see a lot, how many people prefer it over Temple of Doom. There's a lot of hate for Temple of Doom. It's really weird. It's really weird. Cause growing up, I was just like, Oh, this is awesome. 
Uh, and I still I love it. I still love it. I mean, but it doesn't bother me any. Uh, but people people will like uh, Crystal Skull over over Temple of Doom. So, but it's nice to see that Crystal Skull was uh, has has, has kind of gained its um, appreciation audience. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. uh, I didn't hate it at all. So, but. I got, I got a good feeling. I got a really good feeling about this. Well, there it is. The Dan Aykroyd Crystal Skull Vodka Shooter, right? Yes. Yeah. So uh, that is based off of the the Mitch. I want to say Mitch Hedberg, but that is not correct because he <laughs> not was correct. a fantastic comedian. Yeah. Uh, but it was based off of those skulls. Yeah. That's what I think a lot of people miss about that particular Indiana Jones movie is every Indiana Jones movie. Now, Temple of the Doom was my least favorite out of the first three. I don't know that I like Crystal's, the Crystal Skulls more than I like Temple of Doom. I know. That, that's probably a bit of a stretch. But I definitely love Raiders of the Lost Ark and oh. The Last Crusade first. You know, here's the thing. Last Crusade is the one that I've seen the least. Oh, that's I and I liked it. I mean, I, I remember everything about it, but I, I've, I've seen it the, I think the least amount of times out of any uh, any of the uh, indie movies. And uh, I mean, it was it was great. It was cool. I mean, I I can definitely tell you what it was about and what the artifact was, and what he, I can tell you things about it. But uh, it was good. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, growing up, what I had was. Raiders and Temple of Doom, and do nothing. Nothing beats Raiders for me, man. Like oh, nothing. No, Raiders, Raiders, the Raiders is the end all, be all indie movie for me. I just thought it was so badass. And um, so, I got a pair. Obviously, I wear glasses. I have a pair of glasses that are the little bitty, the little bitty round glasses. Mm-hmm. And when I first got him, I was so worried because I was like, holy shit. I'm, I'm going to look like the guy that got his the medallion yes. burned into his hand, right? I thought the first comment I would get is like, oh, look, it's Harry Potter, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I will have to say the first comment I got from him was walked in and said, oh, dude, you look like the dude from Indiana Jones. It's like, oh, ah, with his right. hand. That's, I, I look like, so I look like a Nazi <laughs> henchman. Thank you. Uh, awesome. But I was like, okay, that's much better than I expected. Because I would much rather be compared to him than than Harry Potter. Would you? Yes, absolutely. A Nazi. He was way you? cooler. Not for that aspect. I'm just saying he was he was way cooler than Harry Potter. No, honestly, he is fucking cooler than Harry Potter. I'm gonna, I'm, be, I'm just gonna be real with you. Like, he's I don't an awesome even, character. Yeah, I yeah. would like to see him return. Yeah. Well, he's dead. He his his face got melted. So. Yeah. In one of the most horrifying scenes. Oh my childhood. God! Like, what are we talking about here? Like, that shit was crazy. You know, you know what's funny is when we were we were in Peaks Mill, and um, you remember our, our our library that we had upstairs on the second floor. Yes, there was two Indiana Jones books that I used to check out from there. There was a a, a Temple of Doom um, picture storybook. And there was also, and th- dude, I, I, I would kill to have this right now. Uh, and I'm sure I could find it, but I used to check this out all the time. It was a, um, it was a Raiders of the Lost Ark screenplay book. So what it was, was all, all the, it, it was, a, it was, it was, it was like a storyboard of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Whoever did the storyboarding art for how the movie was going to be laid out was documented into this book and laid out in sort of a comic book format. And it was the coolest thing ever. Um, and I used to check that thing out all the time. I mean, it was like that thick, every little, every, every single exact dialogue that was in the movie was 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 documented in this book and it was storyboarded out and it was like Indy turns left and it had like had the arrow that pointed left and his head turning I mean it was like storyboarded out super cool but I remember like it being kind of controversial because uh um, stupid kid Jason was like oh it said son of a bitch <laughs> 
and I was sh- and I showed I showed oh okay do you remember our librarian um what was she she was like Polish or something Miss Kozlowski or Miss oh, God. do you know do you remember know. Who, you don't remember what I'm talking I, about I don't remember the librarian's name at Peaks Mill I showed her and I was like someone will make a, a comment every time we bring up Peaks Mill we oh. get something in the comments so I hope so because I love talking about Peaks Mill I love let me just tell y'all anytime y'all we need dude Dwight we need to do a Peaks Mill episode dude that would be interesting do you know Got how much cool experience. shit we could talk about so much cool shit about Peaks Mill Elementary man I mean like, there is there is so much because I, you know what that's that's an episode we Doesn't have to be the next episode. one, but it's definitely an episode. There's got to be some good history there, too. So, Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when my mom went there, it went all the way to 12th grade. Did it really? Yeah. See, this, this is a factoid. We've, we've, got, we've got one in the bag right now for, for an episode. So, um, yeah, no, that's, that's good. But, yeah, yeah, I, I like was ratting myself out on this book. I was like, you're probably going to get this book banned from the Peaks Mill Library. But I was like look, this has son of a bitch in it. And then she's like, oh, give yep. me that. And I'm like, can't do that. oh, there's probably the last time I'll check that out. But Way to go. She probably took it home and it's on her. Stupid. It's probably worth a lot of money. I need to try. You know what? We're going to go on with this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to uh, find that uh, find that book on eBay. I would love to have that. I mean, it was, it was incredible. So. All right. Well, while Jason looks for the Indiana Jones book on eBay, I want to make sure that everybody subscribes, smash that like button, give us all the likes you want so we always show up in your feed. Comment on the video. Even if you're not joining us live and you're watching later, please comment on the video. Leave us your thought. Also, take a moment to tell you if you would like to go to Geek Crate. That's Geek Crate, G-E-E-K-C-R-A-T-E. Use the promo code POWERBOMB002. Again, that's POWERBOMB002 at checkout. You will get a whopping 10% off your Geek Crate or Smuggler's Crate. They have boxes for all fandoms, Star Wars, Pokemon, which we've opened up both of those boxes here on the channel. They have uh, all kinds, anything that your heart desires, you will find something there. And with Powerbomb 002, you can get 10% off of your Geek Crate. And you also help out the show. So that's very important to mention as well. Helping the channel bring more great stuff like Do or Do Not, a Star Wars podcast, and the Culture Cast, all our unboxing videos, all of our seasons of soda taste test videos all of those videos are brought to you by the powerbomb nation and your support is greatly appreciated make sure you follow us on social media at powerbomb nation the culture cast is a powerbomb nation production from powerbomb digital follow jason shepherd at jason shepherd i I, I just want to say i found the book on ebay it's 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 We've got we've got one from twenty five dollars all the way up to a hundred, but I feel like I need to buy one, so I might end up you doing that. You should probably buy the twenty five dollar one. I might hit it up anyway. Yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Follow Jason Shepard at Jason Shepard Artworks with a big old X. With an X. Got an X. He is. Uh, you still got the rings on your Miller Lite. Was that the last one? Son. Yeah, that's how you do it right there. And I said, what I could do is uh undo my belt buckle and just like <laughs> slip my belt through there and let it hang off my belt and just walk around the house with it and be like, fuck it and pull okay. it off and be like, okay. So here's the, here's the question we're signing off with. <laughs> All right. How many of those have you, have you had at least five on the rings and the, and your belt ran through the one walking around the house with a five pack on your hip? There was a time years ago where as a funny gesture, I would do it. I would just be like, I'm just going to wear them on my belt and walk around. Like, that'd be funny, right? We'd be like people in the house and we, we were like having a party or whatever. Do it. I don't do that now because I, I don't wear pants or belts in the house anymore. It's all, <laughs> it's all comfortable shorts or sweatpants from here. When I get home, it's comfort mode, man. Like I can't, I can't stay uh, fully clothed in the house anymore. So 
whatever you guys are envisioning right now, just know that below the camera, it's all track shorts and, and house slippers, man. Like you got on the eighties track seat. So when you get up to walk here, dude, I'm, I'm talking like it's all swish swish. So yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Oh my God. Well, <coughs> well yeah. ladies and gentlemen, that's all we got for you tonight. I'm Dwight couch. This over here is Jason Shepard. Thank you so much for tuning in. And always it's been a blast. Always. <laughs>